So this car, we put a turbo kit and a clutch in it seven years ago. And then four years ago, we changed the turbo to a supercharger because the turbo had some problems. So this has been on here four years. And the amazing part is the clutch has been in there seven years. Now the clutch feels like it's wore out. It's got this much free play. And it's got this much clutch at the end. So this is well and truly used. But the amazing thing is, is it's lasted. Oh, the battery doesn't sound very happy, does it? So that always adds a little bit more fun to the build. So let me drag out a 75 foot extension cord and my charger and put some power into it. Question is, where's the battery? <laughs> I hadn't seen this car for a long time. I'm guessing the battery is tucked away in the back somewhere. Let's take a look. So stereo is back here. Let's have a look. There's a battery. There we go. Success. All right, so now we can move in. See how this clutch is. Oh yeah, it engages right at the top. <laughs> so still seven years, you can't really grumble at that, right? That's pretty good. It still feels okay. It still engages. It just has really, really high engagement. It's gonna be interesting to see this one come out. I'd really like to see if we can find him a heat shield there. That's why it looks kind of funky here. The battery would usually go here, but there's a heat shield between that header and the fuse box that's missing. So I'll dig around, see if we can find him something. You see how early of a kit this is, because we don't orientate the filter that way. We'll be changing that pipe to lose that intake temp sensor adapter quite a long time ago now. So it's always good to see a kit being in use, somebody being enjoying it for this length of time. So that's what a seven-year-old Clutchmaster's Clutch looks like. I don't even remember what kind of flywheel that is. Light one? It's a really light one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's got some color in it, but it's not chewed up. It's got some heat in it. That was the last thing I wanted to do is to call him and tell him he needs a flywheel, but it looks like that can be surfaced and it will be uh, fine. Exedi, yeah, that's just an Exedi middle section. That is an old one. You haven't done that for a while. No. Nope. Still got material on it though, doesn't it? Barely. <laughs> oh yeah, I can see how thin it is now. Yeah. The fork was almost touching the front of the case. Was it really? Yeah. What's the other side look like? Same. So this is funny. We built this exhaust over seven years ago. I think he told me it was longer than that, but it's a single three inch. And it's funny how this happened. George just happened to bonk his head. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely empty. The material has baked off. Same as this one too. So there's no material left in that. It might be interesting. I'm gonna ask him if, um, well, we've talked him into an exhaust, but if he leaves us this, I'm gonna ask him if we can cut this in half so we can show you what it looks like on the inside. But this is super, super old three inch and obviously having no material in there, it's been getting loud, but owning the car for so long, you probably don't notice as much because it's getting loud little by little. So we have a couple of exhaust options. One I'm gonna show you, this is gonna be an exhaust option to try and make things a little bit more economical for you guys. I don't wanna sell you a $3,000 exhaust that takes us three days to build because we don't have the time to build it. We don't want to charge you that much for an exhaust. I'm exaggerating. We, we have a lot lower price exhaust, but the exhaust we're going to put on this, I want to show you it's an exhaust that is somewhat pre-made, but we're going to modify it to our taste, change the things that we don't like about it, replace the things that we don't like, improve it, put a larger resonator on that kind of thing. But for right now, we're going to take this, this guy off and then I'll talk you through the new exhaust option. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple of things that we're gonna be changing. First off, this piping is 70 millimeters, so it's a good size pipe and it's a nice piece. I'll show you some of the weak links and some of the things that we see to improve. First off, this is the inline resonator. It's a little bullet resonator, and to be honest, it doesn't really do a whole lot. It's too small. If you look at the inside diameter versus the outside, that is the actual material packing area, which is about this much. So it doesn't really do a whole lot, if any. So we're gonna be changing it to this much larger resonator right here. 
this is about 300 percent larger the actual area so this is going to do a much better job at taking some of that sound away it takes a little bit of work to put it in there but it's the right size a little bit longer obviously quite a bit larger all the way around next thing the exhaust tips here these are the five inch exhaust tips they don't look good plus they stick out way too much from the bumper they're just they just don't line up and look exactly the way we want it so we're going to be changing this too the mufflers are good again i'm going to talk about basically tell you what's good and what is bad the mufflers are very good the tips we don't like they're riveted on here we have seen some of these rivets come loose and these rattle but the position and the size on the s2000 especially on an ap1 that don't match the car very well at all this is our lht tip this is what we use on the ap1 it's obviously a smaller diameter you can see how much different that is and we're gonna we can actually cut this to where we need it so it protrudes at the bumper the right amount and of course make sure that the orientation is correct at the same time but this is a much much cleaner look especially on the ap1 the ap2 we have the same design tip but it, it is a little bit larger because the ap2 has a larger opening next thing how they attach this section here to the y section is these awful clamps right here this just you see that they're just a big ugly clamp it's obviously good for production quick easy to install but they look ugly we're gonna be be removing that and removing some of this section right here and welding that direct to this y section so this y section and we've seen this a lot we get a lot of these cars coming in so we get to see the things that go wrong we see this weld crack right around this flange right here so another thing we're going to do is beef this up by adding one extra weld on the inside to basically spread that load so it's not all on that weld you see this part that comes through i'm going to add a weld around there clean that up add a little bit more strength to it and this plaque here it's way big it is there for a brace but it's way big and it's really obnoxious from the back of the car this is the part that welds oh we're gonna weld to this right here imagine this going on here big ugly clamp around here we're gonna re remove some of this this little cut here is so it can actually squash on the pipe we're gonna cut back past this cut here so you don't see it so this pipe goes in about this much and then put just a nice clean welder on there it doesn't need to be in four sections it's mainly for shipping purposes we're building it to go on the exhaust to look right fit right and look clean so that's another little area we're going to adjust right there is this section but i'll show you this as we go what we're going to do All right, so by welding around here, it adds a little bit of strength. Now it's basically a double weld. It's mainly from what I've seen is this just, it's very, very thin here and it concentrates all the vibration right here. So what I'm also gonna do is build a little tab across here on the underside, actually on the top side so you don't see it, just to add a little bit more strength on this flange area right here. All right, so a little tab around here, just to add a little bit of rigidity to it and then we're going to change that tab across the back make it a little bit smaller a little less obnoxious and give this a quick surface make sure it's perfectly flat what did we get give us a quick rundown Ooh, we got our cheapest meal yet from is there. it really yes it is actually we got let me show you this and then everybody will guess is that the it's a is, bread bowl oh okay i'm like wow, is that an apple <laughs> <laughs> what kind of apple now is they, that now they wrap the apples yeah, this is how they do it, and then they cut it open and they. Oh, it's the soup it. bowl, so you haul out the bread and dump no, the soup. No, it's in already it? hollowed. They wouldn't make you hollow well, it. Well, I don't know. I don't yeah, but go there very often. It. Fantastic. So three soup, soups. It's freezing. Three soups, three big bowls of bread. Yeah. Awesome. So we did good. Nice. All right, I want to turn the camera off so we can eat. <laughs> so these are the clutch parts that you're going to get when you buy our kit online. I'll just go over them real quick. The large seal right here is the main seal for the engine. The small seal is the main seal for the transmission. This is the slide. This is the part the bearing rides on. It bolts to the transmission with three bolts. The release bearing rides on it. There is the dust boot. Again, very common. I'll show you the old one. It falls apart. These are the hardened drive shaft bolts that we include with the 2000 to 2003 kits. 
the OEM Pilot Baron. This is either going to be a Nietzsche or a Koyo. There is numerous, uh, there's a few bearings that Honda use in their kit, so it's going to be one of those. And then, of course, the Honda Super High Tem Aurora Grease, however you want to pronounce that. I'll let you go ahead and correct it in the comments because it seems like people like to do that, but we call it Super Grease, Magic Grease, however. And then, of course, the release bearing, the Nietzsche bearing, Nachi, Naki, however you want to pronounce that too. I don't care how you pronounce it, but just make sure you use it. If you don't buy it from us, Buy it from somewhere. Don't put the cheap bearing in that comes in your kit. It will fail and it usually takes out the whole clutch. And then of course, the only difference between the FX300 and the OEM package is the disc and pressure plate, which we're doing the FX300. I'll show you that here. FX300, this is the pressure plate and disc. Of course, you're gonna get the alignment tool with it. And the only difference between this kit is those two parts right here is the disc and pressure plate if you buy the OEM. You do get the factory Honda parts. I buy them from Honda. They're not the Exedia replacement. They're not the OEM style or whatever you want to call it. It's actually factory Honda parts. But let me show you real quick those other parts that we talked about where they're going to go just to help you understand before you buy this stuff. That way you know where it's going to go and how you're going to install it. So this is the actual slide right here. See how it bolts onto the front of the transmission. That part wears, gets grooves in it. That's where you get some of that feel from pressing the clutch. The bearing is actually riding on that tube right there. So that's the part that we're gonna supply with the kit. And right behind there is the seal. It's the transmission seal. And again, if you take the, tra take the transmission apart, you see it kind of wet inside here. It's often that seal leaking from behind. Now once you take the flywheel off, this is the back of the motor. You see we've already removed the seal, but this is where the main seal is on the engine. That's the seal that we provide too. So you're going to remove that and put the new seal in there. Now make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you've done this before because you damage the seal putting it in. They're often not a reusable item. So make sure whoever you're taking it to, they know what they're doing if you're not doing it yourself. It's no longer rubber, it's kind of like plastic now. It's like it's no longer supple. If I bend this, yeah, you see that? Look at that. Ooh. Actually, sounds like plastic now. Isn't that? And the seals it, don't look bad, but again, they kind of lose their rubber feel. They get kind of a hard plastic feel to it. That's just where we removed it, that mark there. But this lip here kind of loses its flexibility so that's again why we just replace it we're not in there every week so when you're in there why not just do it all uh, the slide this one isn't actually too bad you can feel a bit of a bump all across there but we've seen much much worse we replaced the clutch on this um, eight nine years ago so we might have put this slide in there at the same time but it's still got nice fresh grease now we've had a few people ask us hey what about this what about that grease what about a dry lube? Well, this is what Honda recommend is this super high temp Aurora grease right here. That's what Honda recommend in their service manual. That's what we've been using for years now. And it's a good, egg, good example. This is nine years old and it's still got, you know, the slick feel. I mean, it's still on there and it still felt good. It wasn't drying up and it wasn't uh, giving it a rough feel. But I just wanted to show you that. Something a little different. Some little mini Honda parts right here. A bunch of little bags. So these are springs. We got, I believe there is a total of five. There's the part numbers. Uh, those are different. Those are different. And then these two are the same. So there's five here. These are detent springs for the transmission on an S2000. Now these are when you run it through the gears and you feel the click, click, click where there is a spring and then a ball behind it that pushes into, uh, imagine having a rod like this with a dent in the side and the ball fits into the dent and as it goes back and forth, as it clicks through the ball. So this is a crude drawing of what I was trying to explain. This would be the bar that is moving back and forth. This is one of the detents. This is where the ball actually pops into that. This is our spring and this is the ball. The ball is like a tube, it encapsulates the spring. This is the head. So this is, what we are looking at right here. See what we've got going on here? Well, these are some, that's nothing to do with what we're doing. This was a past build, but 
by increasing the tension of that spring, even if the old spring is worn or if you was to get aftermarket, that makes that detents more noticeable, makes the shifter much more positive as it clicks into gear, there's less chance of clicking out of gear. That's just something to keep an eye on. They do sell upgrades for these, but we're just changing them to the factory and measuring each one as we go. And we've noticed a couple of them that are a little shorter, so it might make enough difference to make it pop out of gear occasionally. And again, it's only done it like three times, but that's more than what they would usually do. So this should fix that issue. The spring tension is what's keeping the ball against that. Well, one of the things we've found is on a couple of S2000s, a couple of them have popped out of gear. One of them that we have on the lift right now has done that. So we're gonna basically find out where all these go and replace all of them and double check them. This is the S2000. So first off, behind this header right here, there is two. You see there's two bolts right there. There is two. There is one up on the top. Let's do it the old fashioned way first. So these are the two side by side that I was kind of guessing. Two, four, four, five, five. There's one on one side, one on the other of those. All right, that would be too easy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Just see that that one on the right is a little taller. Kind of hard to say. It's a little bit. Yeah. Kind of feels a little bit more precise. So this one has the UK mod. You might have seen this on the past channel. It has a UK mod. And we redid the brakes on this, did a brake upgrade, repainted the calipers, that kind of thing. But definitely feels a little, a little bit more solid. So, all right, this one is done. The customer can take this, it's ready to go. By the way, this is the temperature while it's sitting here. It's not that warm today. It's, it's cold, it's 51 today. So we are cold here in Florida. I know you guys are probably jealous, but to us, it's still cold. So now the tip fits, looks a whole lot better. It's more size-wise for this car. You see this is only a three and a half as opposed to five inch. Also, you see how everything is perfectly flat by not having the clamps here and having everything all wobble and move around. We can actually put a level across here, get it absolutely perfect. And you see that <laughs> it's, <laughs> it just doesn't look good. It's way too big. It doesn't fit that cutout very well. And it's that sheet metal tip. It's just goofy looking. I think that looks so much better. I like the double wall. It looks more substantial. And the hole on the inside, obviously, is kind of like a megaphone. If it gets really large, it amplifies whatever noise you've got coming out of it. Kind of like a, how the old school megaphones back in the day. So double wall tip gives you that slightly larger look, but the interior diameter remains the same. It remains two and a half all the way through. All right, so a change of plan. We left the mufflers polished uh, for two reasons. One, the customer said surprise him. And I don't think I've seen polished on his car before and it does look against black pretty good. Also, when they're ceramic coated, they're prepped, they're etched. So the, the, pre the ceramic will uh, stick to it basically, which means it gets really, really roughed up, kind of like bead blasted. And then you can't go back to polish. So this way, if you leave it shiny, we can go to black. But if they're done black, we can't go back to shiny. So we're trying to give him some options. And I think he might like this, but look how much better that looks with the smaller tip on there. It suits the car much better. And of course, there's none of those ugly clamps right here. Has the bigger resonator right there. Next question is, how much quieter is it? Let's put it down. Let's take a listen. All right, so now it's actually louder up here than it is at the back of the car. So we always like to go over the clutch. This is like the lightest possible way to break it in when there's no weight on it. It's kind of like a preliminary rear break in and again, it's way, way overkill. It's just one of those things we like to do. It gives it a chance to kind of meet the services with no load on it. Probably I should drive it. Obviously the break in procedure is very important. It's just one of the things that we do. We'll put usually a mile on it, on the lift. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Real quiet. So it's got a pretty
pretty nice tone on the inside. Again, the supercharger is about as noisy as it gets. And then as you bring the RPMs up, the sound almost goes away. Right there. But it doesn't drone, that's the important part. Alright, very cool. So he's going to break in the clutch and this one's ready to go. He gets a nice little instructions and sticker from Clutch Masters and he gets a much quieter exhaust. So you, you hear how that hollow that sucker is. Well, somebody said that they're only good for X amount of miles before this packing material blows out. It's the same on this. This is what we used as a resonator. It's the same muffler cut down as you see by the lettering. We've shown this in our video before. On the S2000 we could only fit in a 10 inch section right here so obviously we cut a piece off here but this is the same way. Kind of sounds like an oil barrel. So we're not keeping this. We're not going to put it back on. I don't want to sell it. This is an old old exhaust that we made just to fit that car. It's not as nice as what we do now obviously we didn't have a really tight bend we didn't match all the pie cuts i should have done pie cuts here and pie cuts there and the whole thing but this is just going to be junk so what i'm going to do is cut a section out here see what it looks like you ready As you can see, there's just a little bit left right at that end. But other than that, it's hollow. There's nothing in there at all. Could make that into a smoker. So I don't know how many miles is on this. This is about nine years old that we put this exhaust together. We're guessing there's about 50,000 miles on this muffler. So if that gives you an idea how long these last, I guess that's that's a pretty good indication, but this has the same sound as this. Hence why the exhaust was getting loud, so kind of interesting. And the customer's already reported the exhaust that he has right now is so much quieter, he's happy with it. So this one can go in the trash. Coming up, this is Project MJ. It belongs to a friend of mine. We're doing some titanium work. This is a awesome Evo. We'll do a little walk around and talk to him about it when he picks it up. But in the meantime, if you like the channel, support us, go to our store, buy some of our merch, buy some parts for your car, and don't forget, enjoy your car. We'll see you in the next video.